Hello. I don't do a lot on the Cocos, but this video is about my Coco 2. This is one of the first, um, it is the first Coco I ever got, and it's uh, in good shape. But um, I had never done anything with a keyboard, and it's pretty clear someone had spilled soda or something along the way. I had a couple of keys the, around the and M that were sticking. Um, so this video is about taking this apart and um, cleaning it up uh, to get it to be really working well again. Um, when I started this, I looked around on YouTube and other places about kind of instructions about this and didn't find any, so that's kind of what um, got me to do the video. Um, one thing, the TLDR, too long didn't read or watch, um, these keys can be pulled out. See, I have the um, the melted keyboard on the two, and these keys can be pulled out with a key puller, um, and then you can just clean it out. Uh, I didn't do that. I didn't know if they were or not, and I couldn't find any information. So I actually go from the back, um, clean the um, mylar strip or whatever that thing is, and um, go through and clean everything um, except the little... Uh, plastic um, things that push the keys back up those were like spotless so uh, discretion being the better part of Valor I left those alone <laughs> no need to key anything but the rest of it I use Napma and um, and uh, uh, alcohol to clean these up and it all works great so enjoy so I sort of assume you know how to get the keyboard out of the computer. There's plenty of videos on breaking down a Coco. Um, once you flip it over, the metal, I started from the back, and the metal piece needs to come off. I've heard that not all of these have screws, and I think if it's not screwed, um, best to uh, not do this part. Pull the keys from the front and just clean it out and, and be done. Carefully keep all the screws. I, I actually dumped that white container and um, created a big mess, and that set me back probably 15 minutes while I had to go search for all of those on the floor. Not not too much fun, trust me, but um, one of the uh, pitfalls of uh, being careless, maybe a little higher-edged container would have been better. So after all the screws are out, uh, the, the metal plate will, will actually come right off. To show the, I'm not sure, plastic or mylar or whatever it is that the keys push against. And underneath that are uh, little plastic... Um, uh, little plastic pieces that are actually, instead of springs, um, they're kind of what push the key back up. Just took all of those up and put them in a container. Um, you're going to see me putting keys in there, but later I separated these out because I decided not to um, kind of clean the um, the uh, those those um, plastic things in the alcohol or NAMA. I was worried it might damage them and, and mine were pristine it's harder to tell in the video but those uh, little plastic push spring things are are in great shape so here I'm just trying to figure out um, I discovered that oh in fact the keys do separate um, so I'm gonna get a key puller and start um, pulling that out after I start with the air um, my general strategy is going to be to clean things with that and alcohol and then use the compressed air to clean it um, if you don't have a key puller, you need a key puller. Um, you shouldn't be working on keyboards without it. Um, the other device, you're going to destroy things. But it's the perfect tool. Um, this shows the problem with this melted keyboard. It's really, really hard to get this thing in here. Um, I, that's why I wasn't sure if they actually, if it somehow detached from the bottom. But it doesn't, um, as you can see. Um, the, the two parts separate. Um, so I'm actually... Uh, going through here and um, pulling all of these keys out and they're all going in that little green container and I'm going to dump uh, naphthma in them to kind of bathe them and get rid of all the stuff. So here's where I'm at after that. You can see the Coca-Cola and Gump that was already in there. I mean the tops were clean but that was what was messed up. And there's the, um, I used the silver to, I mean the, the back to actually hold the, um, the plastic pieces. 
Um, so I'm starting with sort of like bathing those keyboard parts in nap mud, and I'm gonna swoosh that around and let it sit for a while. Um, this gets, uh, I, I do guitar repair and this stuff is great. Um, it's also good for circuit boards, it doesn't hurt anything, but it gets rid of kind of DNA and clean stuff up and it's not harsh at all. Um, it also does evaporate, but I, I usually use hot air to um, do that. So you can see first pass air, clean it all off. When I go to Q-tips, um, I usually go to um, alcohol. This is like the 98% kind, not the, you know, thing. So it's good for cleaning. All right, and halfway through, I discovered that it wasn't as hard to take the space bar out as I thought. Um, sometimes I leave those because they can be tricky to get back in, but in this case, it wasn't a problem. Okay, for cleaning the um, the plastic, uh, I'm using like a clean, uh, soft towel, and uh, you can see dirt coming off of that, so there was some on this. And I'm using the alcohol, uh, but very lightly. I'm, I'm really trying not to destroy this thing, but it was in pretty good shape and didn't appear... Um, appear at all brittle or anything so um, I was fairly lucky um, again be be careful you could really destroy your whole cocoa with with this stuff um, you know I, I wouldn't be pulling this apart unless you're like me and you were kind of desperate because keys didn't work at all and you don't know and try the front first just pull the keys and clean that out with alcohol before you go into this but since I had it all broken down I'm gonna do both sides with the with the alcohol um, nice and gentle just to kind of clean up anything I'm also going to do a little bit with the alcohol on where the keyboard plugs in. I used detoxid on the metal parts, but I didn't put it on the plastic. I do actually put a little detoxid when we put it back together um, there. And I also, when I have the cocoa apart, I use a little detoxid on the um, cartridge slot as well because um, that's a little hard to get to when the computer's all together. So you can see I'm kind of staging stuff over by the Model 1 um, over on the other side which is the computer I actually use most of the time. Um, mostly do Z80 systems, but uh, do have a co couple Coco ones. I actually have one um, assigned one from Tandy Assembly from Paul Schreiber. And uh, I have another Coco one that has um, like the swapped out keyboard, which is a really nice one. I'm working on maybe getting a composite mod onto that. Um, my Coco 2 has Coco VGA and a composite mod, so it's really nice for modern things, especially the Coco VGA. Highly recommended. Um, but the Coco ones don't have that, so I have to go to the television tuner. So you can see I'm using Napma with a, a soft toothbrush, and then when I'm done, I sort of blow it off and um, I set up the keys. Uh, oh, I was just doing the bottom parts there, but once they're done, and there's actually Napma in that. Um, green container so I'm scrubbing a little bit with the toothbrush and then using the um, the uh, q-tip where needed but I want to get any kind of gunk off of there and get this key all these keys completely cleaned out this takes a, a lot of patience um, I'm not showing every single key in this video but this is hours of work and, and please be slow and careful um, you don't want to get this all back together and find you didn't get the coca-cola gunk out of the m key very slow and uh, tedious And I use the air to dry them off. I don't want any of that alcohol or napma sitting on those keys. Um, it shouldn't hurt anything, but it's best to get it dried off. All right, at this point, we've kind of got all the pieces parts together, and that's the white tray of screws that I dump all over the floor shortly after this um, as I'm trying to put it back together. 
and there's the nice alcohol clean plastic and I also rubbed nap on alcohol on that metal piece so we'll start reassembling there's really only one way these parts can go on so it kind of works out pretty well uh, I'll kind of show that there so you can't can't really mess this up you got to sort of get through yeah I'm sort of showing there's like a little tab and you can see the tab inside when you put the keys on so make sure you put the keys on right side up and you should be should be okay um, the tab is kind of nice because sometimes when you're working on these keyboards I've done a lot of these um, and keys that are a little tricky like the um, X key that would go forward or backwards or O that it's not obvious um, which way it is the having a little tab makes it more evident because um, you figure out they all sort of go the same direction and that's that's kind of nice so you can see I'm sort of showing the, the tab um, that's that's kind of a nice feature of the design you're not sitting there wondering because I've gotten done and realized oh I swapped the O and the zero um, and you can kind of subtly see it um, I did make one mistake on this keyboard. We'll show it later when I put it back together. But um, what I'm doing is the my real PC is in front of me, and I actually have a picture of a Coco 2 on the screen, so I can see how the keyboard's laid out. Um, mostly with this sort of work, I recommend like taking pictures on your phone. But if you're just putting a keyboard back together, you can usually find a Google Photo that covers it. So here we go, um, finishing up. Um, and ironically, I get these last two keys wrong. We'll see that shortly. Um, the C should have gone over where I'm putting this last key. Um, you have to push up from the bottom to get that up, and then the key snaps back in. Yep, and it should move up and down freely like that. You can check it out. Yep, and it should hang. I'm checking that things aren't sticking out or you have one that's like uh, the bottom looks weird or anything when it moves. You check all of this out before you start screwing things together. That looks really good. It's all cleaned out. All right. So after that, we've got to start putting those uh, little plungers or, or uh, metal or plastic uh, rubber things that um, kind of push the keys up when it's all put back together um, and I'm not going to show all of this but we'll see a couple of them put on I'm getting them all together um, these just sort of drop in but one of the things I, I ran into and you can't really see it right now is um, in the later things I kind of propped up the keyboard because you want sort of the keyboard yes yeah, see how I want it hanging um, I'm actually not going to show that right now, but you'll see in a second when it comes back. I'm going to put little uh, put little supports on the side. I'm grabbing something out of the drawer. So the keyboard's kind of propped up on both sides so that the keys kind of fall down. And that makes it much easier to put the plungers into the keyboard. Ah, here we go. I've got a little GoTech and a GoTech in the wrapper. So that'll work great. Just enough to um, hang, it, hang it in the air. All right, kind of failing um, this. I should have planned a little better. You can probably come up with something better than these Gotex. I'm guessing when you do it. So now it's e much easier. They set right in the holes, and it's really easy. And in fact, um, I'm not going to show all of this, but like what I kind of learned is just dump a bunch of them on there and sort of shift them into the thing. Um, all I did with these is kind of put them in my hand and blow them off with the air to just kind of make sure there wasn't any dust on them or anything like that. None of they were immaculate. There was nothing wrong with them. So there, there they all are. Okay, now I'm being very careful with this and kind of just touching the edges. Um, this should be pretty obvious which way it goes because um, you, you know you want that um, keyboard attachment to go uh, down, but it should be kind of tilting down as it is there. Um, also, there it's a little hard to see, but there's holes in that plastic where it'll line up um, with the keyboard and push through. Um, same with the um, little holes that will line up this as well. And then you're able to put the screws in that I dumped on the floor and had to go pick up. Um, so go through and put all of these in. Um, I sort of recommend like putting these in sort of um, a little bit loose and then tightening it up once they're all on just to make sure everything's lined up right. However, the plastic tabs that sit up really kind of do a pretty good job of lining this up.
All right. I also don't recommend for this the like any sort of electric screwdriver. These go in fast and you don't want to strip the you're going into plastic here, not metal against metal. notice still even when I'm doing this I have it up on the supports um, so that we're not pushing up against this metal um, we're not bending the plastic okay they're all in supports are gone and we've got a keyboard all right so for putting it back in um, I use this to detox it a lot on like my Z80s and stuff. So with Coco's, um, I'll move it a little bit. You can see the Coco VGA card in there and my composite mod. Um, all right, so in the strip there, I'm gonna like just put a little bit of this, just swab a little. I've kind of wiped it all off, but this stuff is great for um, the like all kinds of retro computer problems. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. Um, all right, so we'll go back in, um, and then you got kind of got to grab this and push it in a little bit firmly. The thing that's the most annoying about this is it doesn't actually like go straight in. There's a little bit of a like the comes out of the keyboard in one place, and we're about a I don't know half a centimeter or so over. You can kind of see how it bulges. That's kind of weird and kind of messes me up every time I do this. But um, I'm safely in there, um, kind of supporting the keyboard because it's not on there. All right, and it types. All right, um, before I close it up, I also use this detox it to just clean, yeah, you can see it hopefully a little bit. Um, detox it on the um, cartridge slot uh, just to kind of clean it out a little bit um, while, while I got the whole computer open. It's just easier to do. All right, here it is. Here's the keys. Um, Notice the C and V are swapped. I didn't know that at the time, but it looks gorgeous. Um, it did before, but it didn't work. Um, the top part was not the part. So I'm putting the screws back in the case. You can see I got my great Coco VGA sticker. Big fan of that for the Coco 2. Um, I think they've got for the Coco 1 now, but I haven't checked. Um, I also realized I'm way behind on firmware. I need to update that. As you can see, I think there are up quite a few revs. It's a great little product. All right, so it's looking good. All right, so print. Much better. Oh, but I hit V, what was I doing? And I'm realizing that I have the keys reversed. So it should be ZXCV, not ZXVC. So this is not a big problem. Pull out the keyboard puller and um, just swap the keys. You can push them in from the top. It's no big deal. And that's what I did. And now we have the keyboard the way it should be. Um, so I'll be back to my Z80 soon. This little Z80 joke, unfortunately, um, the key, the screen memory is not at 3C00, and um, Elder doesn't work on a Coco, if you get that. All right, thanks for hanging out, and um, realize that I only use this Coco for the most sophisticated, computationally intensive um, programs and uh, scientific endeavors.